In this video, we're going to go through the procedure to change the capstan motor bearing that goes bad on these Sony VHS machines. This is applicable to the well, several Sony VHS machines had defective capstan bearings. The material was too thin in the bracket and it bent. And the symptoms of a bearing failure is you can hear the capstan motor rubbing every time it makes a rotation. You hear a ch -ch 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 when it starts. And when, they, when the problem gets severe, the picture will actually freeze momentarily. It's more noticeable in the EP speed recordings than in the SP just because of the torque differences when you're recording and playing at the EP speed. But I'm going to show you how to go about replacing that capstan motor bracket assembly. There's a fair bit of disassembly required to do it. And I'll show you even how you can repair it if you don't have a new bearing. If you can't find one, you can actually bend the original one back to make it work. So first we have to take the top off the machine. identify which type of bearing you've got whether you've got the old type or the new type is the color of the, the top of the bearing now the piece that actually bends is this metal housing here that you can see right here this metal housing that the capstan shaft fits in this is actually the new type and the new type is thicker and I'll show you where they made the improvements to it so here's a look at the capstan assembly the capstan uh, bearing assembly here this is the newer type. What they did is they made these posts a little bit beefier. You can tell the difference between the old and the new type by the color of the end cap. If it's silver, like this, it's the new type of bearing. If it's a brass color, like a copper color, more like the color of this uh, sleeve here, then it's one of the old types that's susceptible to bending. To change that bearing, or even to try and straighten it, we actually have to remove the capstan motor from the unit itself. So in order to remove the capstan bearing, or the capstan motor, we have to remove the base first. So let me get the base off here, the bottom cover off. Just lift and it will just lift off. Now that we've got the bottom cover off, the next step is we have to remove the screws marked with an arrow here. So that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one, because we have to remove the circuit board. So we're going to remove those five screws so that we can remove the board. Capstan motor is underneath here, so we have to remove this board in order to remove the capstan motor. So I'm removing the five screws that are marked with an arrow. I also have to undo a couple plugs. So we removed the five arrow mark screws, unplugged the loading motor, unplugged the drum motor over here, and we then can lift the board out of the way. And just fold the board back out of the way because that's as far as the board has to come out. We also have to unplug the capstan motor here. And we have to remove this screw that holds this bracket in place and remove the bracket and while we're at it we can remove the tooth belt and it just comes off like that and now we need to remove three screws from the top side that actually hold the capstan motor in place the three screws that I need to remove are located on either side and in behind the capstan motor so to get at the screw that's in behind we just have to tilt the head out of the way just by pulling the head away like that it's spring-loaded so it will come back into place we need to remove these three screws that one that one and this one and then the capstan motor can come out now it may be easier if you remove the pinch roller assembly 
as well. So just release the two little catches here, take the top off of the pinch roller assembly and just lift the pinch wheel out and then put the top piece back on as that'll keep this tower gear from getting out of time. So now we can remove the other two screws. So back onto the, the base side again, we have to, before we can remove the motor, we actually have to remove this little brake lever out of the way. So we're just going to release the little catch right here and this little lever will lift out of the way. Be careful not to lose the spring here. So we lift the lever out of the way and now we can just lift the capstan motor assembly out. So now there's our capstan motor assembly. We need to change the bracket here. The bracket is, in held, is held in place with three more screws which go through from the other side. So now what we have to do is we actually have to separate the stator from the bracket. Now if you don't have a new bracket you may be able to straighten this uh, assembly out by slight bending. But I'm going to show you how to take the bracket apart. So now we just carefully, now this is a magnet so you've got to keep it away from any screws. Do not place this on your bench next to the screws or near any iron filings or anything because it will stick to the rotor assembly and it will ruin it. There are two small little washers, one here and one up here. This is to keep oil inside the bearing itself. When you pull the, the assembly apart, these little plastic clips are going to move and they're going to stay with the capstan assembly. So just pull it down a bit so that then you can get your fingers in here and remove those clips and put them away or these washers and put them away for safekeeping because you will need to reinsert them. So once we've done that we can now remove the rest of the stator. This is the magnet here. We want to make sure that we don't place this anywhere where iron filings or screws or anything are going to stick to it. So just place it out of the way where it's not going to get damaged. On the capstan motor sometimes when they when they they have worn it will actually be rubbing against the actual coils here and you'll see the insulation has been rubbed off. If it is rubbed to the point where the, the coil is broken or open the motor won't turn at all but usually that's not the case. Now what typically happens on this is the bearing is going to bend it's going to bend this direction because what what causes the problem is when the unit is in play or record or in forward or reverse search the pinch roller is pressing up against the capstan shaft this direction and the pressure is going against it this direction so it's going to be bent that way so if you just take the unit like this in your hand you can sometimes just push it put your thumb on it hold it in your hand and you can push it enough to straighten it if you can't source a new bearing if you can source a new bearing do replace the bearing or if you can get one out of another machine do replace the bearing because even if you do bend it back and another way of bending it back if you can't bend it back by hand you could take your pliers and get them you know get your needle nose or your, your pliers down here like this and give it a twist and you'll straighten it out a bit what you want to do is because what's happened is when the bearing bends the rotor is no longer straight and it's rubbing on one side every time it goes around and it'll rub the coils along here but if you can get a new bearing housing you just remove the three screws and the bearing housing will come apart from the stator unit. This being the stator. We take the bearing housing out, we get our new bearing, it only goes in one way, it is keyed so you can't put it in the wrong way, it won't fit. It goes in just like that, you put your three screws back in it, Of course, this is when having a magnetic screwdriver helps.
a little bit of torque on there. Make sure your screws are nice and snug. Don't tighten them too tight or you could strip the screws themselves. And now it's time to replace the rotor assembly. Now, other things to keep in mind on this is there is a little small capacitor here on this motor. These have been known to go bad and they'll cause speed irregularities or the motor just to not run or run at the wrong speed. They can go bad. Other things that can go bad on here is down here you've got your Hall effect sensors. There's one there, one there, and one there called H1, H2, and H3. What the Hall effect sensors do is they provide information as to the, the, the phase of the motor. It's a three phase motor. So as the rotor rotates, the magnetic field from the stator, or the rotor, sorry, uh, influences these Hall effect devices and causes the wave shape to change from them, which is detected by the motor drive IC, which then steps the current from one coil to the next. That's how a, a DC motor is made into a three phase AC motor. It's this chip here. These three will affect the motor's ability to turn. The FG pulse is here. The FG pulse, what it does is it reads the edge of the rotor, which has got a series of magnetic pulses encoded into this material. As you can see, here's the main magnet that is turned. This is where your torque comes from. This edge material, which kind of feels like it's made out of plastic, but it's actually plastic with a magnetic material in it, like a, almost like magnetic tape. And it has a signal recorded on it. And as the motor rotates, that signal is picked up by this frequency generator uh, pickup and is sent to the IC. That's to control the, the speed of the motor, the frequency of the motor, whereas the phase of the motor is controlled by the Hall effect devices. Now we're going to put the motor back together, so it's always a, probably a good idea to put a, a, a drop of oil in here as well, but I usually do that when I'm getting closer to final assembly. Uh, I get the bearing in place, get the motor assembly back in place. I'm going to go back to my little, two little washers and put them back on here. The easiest way to get the washers in place is to just drop them in the top, stack them on top of each other in the top here, and Stand them up on end so that they're right into the right up against the bearing, like that, and then you can just insert the capstan shaft, and it will go through both of the bearings or both of the washers. Now pull the stator back a bit, again, and the two washers now that are stacked on top of each other will come down, and then you can use a screwdriver just to push them apart and push one down to the bottom. Let it slide back up, push the other one down to the bottom like that. Of course, this is the time when you would put your oil in. You would open it up a bit, put a drop of oil. This one here, you can push this bearing up, this, this one up just a little bit higher because it's going to seat. Once it snaps into place, it's going to seat. You put a drop of oil on top of your caption shaft here. You put another drop of oil down inside on your capstan shaft inside there. Let it snap together. Push your washers back in place to seat them. That'll keep any oil from dripping down the capstan shaft. It'll keep it in the bearing where it belongs. And now we can go about and reassemble the unit. And we do it in the reverse uh, procedure from when we opened it up. So I'm going to drop the capstan motor in again. It only goes in one way, like that. And it'll just clip into place. There's little plastic clips that will hold it in place. There's a little plastic clip here. That'll hold it kind of centered. We can now go and put our, our brake back on. And it just sits in place like that and snaps down. And then we can put our spring back around this post here. So let me get the spring back on here. I'm just going to grab my pliers or maybe my dental pick. That might make it easier. My dental pick and we'll put the spring back on. That'll hold the motor in place. We'll turn the unit back on its side so that I can replace the screws. So once again, I just put my screws on my magnetic screwdriver and thread them in. Now these screws here have little lock washers on them, so don't get them mixed up. The ones that hold the, the stator or hold the bearing to the, the stator 
don't, but the ones that hold the motor into the chassis do. So here's our, our three screws going back in. And of course the third one we have to tip the audio control head out of the way to put that screw in. Snug them in place. We can now put the pinch roller back on. So just again release the two little catches. Careful not to have the tower gear come out of phase. If you do, the timing marks are on the side of it here. And in the eject position, you'll see the timing marks. So you can see the timing mark here. It's going to point towards that little mark on the side of the gear. So we just reinstall the pinch roller and replace the holder. Now we can turn the unit over again and start reassembling the machine. So first we're going to put our capstan motor connector on and we'll reattach the belt that drives to take up and supply spools and now it's just a matter of returning our circuit board putting our end sensors back through the appropriate holes and the tape sensor down through the middle here that'll drop into place and then we just have to reconnect the loading motor and the drum motor connectors and replace the five screws that hold the board in place. And then we can put the bottom cover on. Again, this was a good design for Sony because you don't have to take all the screws out. You can just drop it in place. And it'll, it'll slide into place. Tighten your screws down and then the unit is ready for testing. Okay, the unit's plugged into the TV. We're ready to load up a tape. Throw a tape in it. The tape will start playing automatically because it is a pre-recorded tape when you know my heads are clogged up. Probably because this little foam wheel here is deteriorated to the point where it's actually putting more dirt back on the head. So we'll just get that little foam wheel out of there and we'll clean the heads with the fingernail trick. Just by using the back of the fingernail up against the heads to remove the clog. There's my color bars playing back. The unit is back in operation. That's how you change the capstan bearing on a Sony VHS machine. We'll catch you in the next one. Did you catch it? Did you catch what I left off? No, I didn't leave the bracket off, but I did leave it off when I was filming to see how many of you guys would notice it.